Summer is the vacation season, but the tanks team isn't relaxing. Quite the opposite, we're rolling out Update 1.1 for the common test. One point one has something for everyone and a heap of new stuff. For the hard hitters, the Polish tech tree. For the perfectionists, balance changes to some maps. For the connoisseurs, the revamped Pilsen and two more locales appearing for the first time. And of course, the second campaign of personal missions you've all been waiting for. Meet the Poles. Tiers one through four are light tanks, classic ones, rather fast but not well armored. They already have the signature Polish feature, higher single-shot damage. At Tier 5, we have a medium, the 25TP Kust 2. Gameplay-wise, it's much like the T-28, but with greater alpha, 140 points, while the average for this class and tier is 115. Tiers 6 and 7 are taken by two relatives with very similar names. The 40TP Habiha has a heavy's aspirations, yet it's a medium with good armor, while the 45TP Habiha is the other way around. It's lightly armored, but still a heavy. Need we say that both have solid alpha? The 53TP Markovskigo sits at tier 8. It's a full-fledged heavy, good armor, pleasant gun depression, and once again, great alpha. The tier 9 is a grown-up tier 8 and a precursor to tier 10. The 50TP Tishkevicha has a sturdy turret that holds a good gun. It inflicts 560 points of damage with a single shot. The depression angle is minus 8 degrees. The jewel in the Polish crown is the 60TP Lewandowskiego. It resembles both the IS-4 and the E-100, as slow, compact, and tough as the Soviet heavy, and as hard-hitting as the German one. The Alpha is a whopping 750 points. The 60TP also has a feature that neither the Russian nor the German has, gun depression of minus 8 degrees. This pole is good in any position, be it a city or hilly terrain. The 60TP pays for its punch and protection with mobility, so beware of arty and fast, light, or medium tanks that will run circles around you. Study the Polish branch, test it, and share your thoughts. Along with the Polish branch comes the new Studzianki map, inspired by the great tank battle of World War II. This location differs from its real-world counterpart for the sake of enjoyable gameplay. The Studzianki map consists of three zones, the village, the fields, and the brick factory. The ruins of the latter are a heavy's playground, covered from SPG fire, and allowing for armor-based play. The fields in the center are good for light tanks, fast mediums, and camo-based play. The village suits every vehicle class. Mines, Glacier, and Siegfried Line were modified to make the team's opportunities even. The province map has changed, too. It now has a limited tier range, from 4 to 7. If you want to know more about the balancing corrections, check the game's site. The Pilsen map is returning in HD quality. It's become larger, it looks and plays different now, especially in its greener parts. Gameplay will be more varied and convenient for all vehicle classes. Update 1.1 will introduce the global tanking community to the game's home city, Minsk. The capital of Belarus finally gets the representation it deserves. The Minsk map recreates a part of the city's center. Some details have been ironed out in the name of balance, but the streets and houses are identical copies of their real-life counterparts. The location is vast and diverse. Dense building blocks favor slow and well-armored vehicles. The central zone with the Gorky Park and the Svislach River embankment is the domain of light tanks. The area behind the circus building is ideal for flanking mediums. All in all, Minsk is a large map providing diverse gameplay. Update 1.1 opens a new campaign of personal missions. The second campaign consists of three operations. The common test will feature two of these. The first will be available right away, with the second coming several days later. To test the second front, players will be credited orders to unlock the operations. When Update 1.1 hits the live servers, all operations will unlock after certain time frames. As before, personal missions will be split into groups, this time by nation rather than by vehicle class. The nations will be 
be put into four pools, the Union, the Bloc, the Alliance, and the Coalition. The missions can be completed only on vehicles from nations belonging to a pool. Another novelty is different terms for every operation. In the first one, the progress will be cumulative, with goals to be reached within any number of battles. The second operation will require good performance in a single battle. The terms of a third will be tied to a series of fights. On top of that, now you can see your progress while you're in battle. The common test interface isn't the final one. We want to test its functionality and look for mistakes. It's a work in progress, so some elements may not function the new campaign's goals aren't easy to meet, but they are worth your time. The rewards are three unique vehicles. Completing the first operation will get you the Excalibur, a British Tier 6 TD. The second will yield you the Chimera, a Tier 8 Medium. The final one will allow you to park the Object 279R in your garage, a monstrous Tier 10 Heavy on four tracks. These tanks are obtainable only by completing Personal Missions 2.0. If you see someone riding these, beware. There's a tough tanker in front of you, worthy of this prize. That's all, folks. Best of luck to you in every battle.